Hi, good morning. Let's look at the verse of the day by video this morning instead of uh, by text. Uh, righteousness guards the person of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. That's Proverbs 13, 6, and I'm reading from the NIV. So here's what's on my heart. Righteousness guards the person of integrity. You know, we've been talking a lot and praying a lot about the small things and recognizing God in the small things that um, impact the way we think and do and make decisions around finances. And a huge theme for years has been how you do anything is how you do everything. And the small things repeated consistently produce the biggest results in the shortest amount of time. So let's think about transforming our mind. What are some of the things that we think about all day long that we're not necessarily even recognizing how they impact our thoughts? And I'm thinking about stuff that's not even financially related, and we wouldn't even necessarily think that it is. But think for a second about what happens when you have conflict in a marriage or conflict with somebody at work or conflict with your kids or friends or any, any kind of, of uh, personal conflict. It's because there has been a thought that has triggered some sort of a judgment or bitterness or resentment. It's not a thought that's coming from gratitude and love. Now think about the financial implications of conflict in the workplace, conflict in marriages. That is never a good thing for your financial position. So now think about what's happening with something that you would think would maybe be unrelated to your financial well-being on a day-to-day -day basis, but sex. Sex in our society right now is more common and easier to talk about than finances. What used to be porn is now the cover of a magazine for selling lingerie. Never mind real hardcore porn. Those things come into our mind and they lodge there as memories. They're images that are stored in our mind. Now, if that image triggers some sort of a sexual response, then it can cause somebody to act out in a certain way. It might cause somebody to think differently about their spouse when they are actually engaging in relationships with their spouse that they're supposed to be. It can cause that. Now, how does that translate into finances? Besides the fact that when marriage breakdowns, there's a huge financial implication. But on a day-to-day -day basis, if you see something, it lodges in here, it maybe registers a sexual response or it registers a response that says, oh, I'm not good enough. Look at that beautiful person. Look at how nice they look wearing that. Look at their beautiful car. Look at their beautiful home, how it's decorated and all of those kinds of things. Look at their life where we compare ourselves to it those things register in our mind and somehow feed us thoughts of not good enough. They fuel envy. They fuel a desire that is something outside of God. How you do anything, how you think anything is how you do, how you think everything. The small things repeated consistently produce the biggest results in the shortest amount of time. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ so that we, all of this, so that we will be able to know and discern and to follow and walk with the beautiful love, the grace, the mercy, the forgiveness of our Lord Jesus Christ. In finances, there's a huge separation and a division and an isolation. And some of that is the same stuff that we are now starting to see. Some of it, a lot of it actually, is because of the way marketing and the way our society has fed us with not good enough. And you can't do this and you've got to aspire to this and how our physiology responds to this. And it does play out in finances because if, you're, if you've got a memory and you've got a thought or you have an image in your mind and somehow that triggers some sort of a not, I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough or my life doesn't measure up, you better believe that over time that is going to resonate with how you think and how you make financial decisions because it will trigger a desire to 
purchase something or not. It'll trigger a desire to say something or to not, or to do something or to apply for work or not, or to ask certain questions. These things, they actually do matter. And so the verse, righteousness guards the person of integrity. We also need to guard not just our hearts, but guard our minds. Because the wickedness will overthrow the sinner. The, the wicked thoughts, the wicked desires, those things that we know are against the word of God. When we guard our hearts, when we guard our minds, when we surrender all that to our Lord, he will, he's there. He promises. And so, Lord God, I pray on a whole new level today. And I ask you to join me in praying, praying for our thoughts, praying for what we let into our mind, what we hold on to our mind. And we pray, Lord God, that there is a purification and there is a righteousness, that there is love and beauty and, and gratitude, that there is great peace in the thoughts, in the desires, and in the, the images that are planted in our mind, that they they conjure up a desire and a love for others and a worthiness and an acceptance and a significance for who we are in you as our children. And that is my prayer for today. Um, God bless you all. Take that and uh, take it to the Lord and ask him to reveal to you any areas that, uh, that he's wanting you to surrender that will overflow and let him come into places that he's previously been left out of. God bless. See you tomorrow.